What's up, you guys? Today, I'm going to share with you my journey of how I discovered my psychic abilities. And if you're skeptical, it's all good because I didn't believe in all this stuff too. In fact, I encourage you to be skeptical because anybody can make some sort of claim, right? But let me just say this. When it happens to you, when you actually experience something that people doubt, what critics say isn't real, then ultimately, at least for me, it doesn't matter what people think. You know what I'm saying? It's been said that a person with an experience is never at the mercy of a person with an argument. Something to think about. And before I get into it, if you haven't seen my video of how I became a healer, where I was able to heal myself of two serious conditions that literally changed my life forever, then I suggest you go check it out. I'll put a link in the description. All right, let's do this. Ever since I was a kid, I was already exposed to what's referred to as psychic phenomena, but we just didn't call it that. Psychics, mediums, that was all demonic to us. Because I came from what's called a charismatic Christian background, which is a form of Christianity that believes that all the supernatural gifts of the Spirit are available today. Like the gift of healing, the gift of miracles, prophecy, word of knowledge, discernment of spirits, etc. And I remember going to these huge crusades, these big events where there would be thousands of people in attendance. And the speakers there claimed to be prophets, which is the Christian version of a psychic in my opinion. Although Christians would deny that, in the sense they'd say that only their source of information is God. While everybody else who's not a Christian would get their information from somewhere else, like demons, Satan, beings disguised as angels of light. But functionally, the way it operates, it's the same. It's just semantics. It's all part of the human experience. Because supposedly, just like psychics, these prophets knew the secrets of others. And supposedly, they could even predict the future. And I'd watch them on TV and hear them say things like, God's telling me that so-and-so has cancer. Put your hands on the screen. Or there's someone out there with a back pain. God's healing you right now in Jesus' name. Very general stuff, okay, that I'm pretty sure out of the millions of viewers, somebody watching was bound to have. But I believed it all as a kid. I ain't gonna lie. I was just a simple kid who didn't really question much. But then all of that changed when I was 17 years old. I had a bad experience that ended up being a major turning point for me, which I share in detail in my healing journey video that I mentioned earlier. And from then on, folks, no joke, and many people can vouch for this, but I became not just a skeptic, but a full-on, hardcore, and aggressive critic of all things paranormal, all of it, Christian and non-Christian, for eight long years. Eight years. All the so-called supernatural, paranormal claims, it was all BS to me, straight up. They were all charlatans doing cold reading, for the most part, who were taking vulnerable people's money. Or, if they were sincere, they were sincerely wrong and delusional. Seriously, I was very passionate about it, to the extent where it was my goal at the time to expose these guys, because of what I seen, because of what I experienced throughout the years. And so, I challenged everyone I came across with who believed in this nonsense. Shoot, I even spoke at events discrediting these things. I used to even joke that a psychic or a prophetic person can point to an audience and be like, someone here is human, and everyone would be like, wow. <laughs> I just didn't buy into it. I wanted to hear specifics. And then 2005 happened. It was a year of hell for me because I was diagnosed with a chronic digestive disease called GERD, and I had an extreme form of it. And I also had a back injury and suffered from excruciating pain. And one negative thing led to another, and my life spiraled down from there. A year goes by, and I meet a guy who was healed through an out-of-body experience. The most impressive miracle story I've ever heard. Because trust me, for eight years, like I said, I didn't believe any quote-unquote supernatural claims whatsoever. Remember, eight long years of criticizing and persuading people to believe otherwise. But meeting this guy became the catalyst for me to look into it again to see if these abilities were real, to see if there were legit people out there. And I was finally open. Plus, I wanted to be healed because everything I did to try to get better wasn't working. So I read every book I could find on the subject. I attended every event that I could trying to meet these so-called gifted people. See, at this point, I can say that to a certain degree, I did believe that these abilities were possible. The problem was that I had a hard time believing that the people were real, that they were legit. You following? And while I was investigating all of this, I still had my back problems. So what did I do? I went to these things called healing rooms. And at these healing rooms, you'd fill out a form downstairs stating your need, whether it be physical, emotional, anything. 
and there would be a trained team upstairs waiting for you to minister to you. And my first experience at a healing room, the team there was visiting from another country and they were really nice. They didn't look weird <laughs> and they laid hands on me, on my back and started saying certain things, giving something called words of knowledge, which is basically a psychic reading, just a Christian version where they tried, quote unquote, reading my mail, okay? Supposedly knowing personal things about me. And to be honest, at that moment, I was turned off, dude. So I turned to the group and straight up told them that what they said to me was too general, that they could have said that to anybody. And they looked offended, but I didn't care because I really wanted to know if they were legit, right? I didn't want to be deceived. And my back still wasn't healed, so that wasn't helping my doubt. But to fast forward over time, I had some interesting experiences. And because of my experiences, surprisingly, I was invited to be part of the healing rooms, the same one I visited before. But this time, I'd be the one ministering to people. And I took it. I said yes to the opportunity. Because not only did I want to learn and develop my abilities, but of course to help people as well. That's always been my heart. Here's how it would work. Again, the person who needs healing or guidance would fill out a form downstairs, right? Like what I did when I went there for my back. And then me and the team would be upstairs waiting for the person to come up. But before they would come up, we, the team, would close our eyes and ask Spirit, the Holy Spirit, to reveal anything. To speak to us about the person we're about to meet. And we'd be in silence for a bit. And then we'd go around and share what we got. Whether it was a picture, a word a feeling, a smell, no matter how strange it sounded. And then the person downstairs would be sent up to the room. Remember, none of us would have a clue of who the person is. And then we'd ask them, does such and such mean anything to you? Mentioning the things that we shared to each other beforehand. Get this, many times, not always, but many times, the messages the team members got were spot on, like specific. Trust me, you know my skepticism already. So I was impressed by them. Every week I did this, you guys, with the team. Every week. And I loved it because it was a safe place for me to learn and to grow. And the team was just so encouraging. Honestly, I cherish those times. They're amazing people. Now, one of my first things I started to notice, which might sound weird to some of you, was that I could actually feel other people's pain. And it happened so much that oftentimes I'd have to do like a body check before beating someone. Meaning beforehand, I'd feel totally normal, no pain at all. But then when I have contact with them, boom, suddenly I would feel pain or a sensation in a specific area that I know wasn't mine. And I'd ask them if it applies to them, and it would. Then I'd lay hands on them, and the pain would go away. And this happened a lot. Oh, and before I forget, as for my own healing, in case you want to know, thankfully, I was able to heal myself. My back's still good, and the GERD, completely gone to this day. It's been 15 years, you guys. My life's never been the same. I'm just so grateful. Okay, back to psychic stuff. There was another time when I heard a voice. And this is a part when you can call me crazy. I'm just playing. This happened when I was at a place called The Block in Orange County. It's like an outdoor mall. And I was chilling at a bookstore. And while I was in the aisle, there was this girl next to me. And I kid you not, I heard something within me say, ask her about her dad. And I was like, what? <laughs> Did I just hear that? Because it wasn't like a typical thought, okay? There was a different texture to it, which is why it threw me off. I didn't want to ask her about her dad. That would be weird. Also, I didn't want to scare her. But I heard it. I heard a voice. I couldn't deny it. So I went for it. I asked her about her dad. And almost immediately, she broke down in tears. And I was like, whoa, there was some abuse going on. So my friend and I, we spent some time with her. And we were able to encourage her. But of course, afterwards, being a skeptical person, I was wondering why it was still pretty general. Because I didn't hear a voice say, ask her about her dad, who's abusing her. Nah, I just heard, ask her about her dad. That's it. So <laughs> some doubt crept in. But then not too long after, I went to the library at school to use a computer. And then a girl around two seats to my right was using a computer as well. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, she got really emotional. I could hear her. So I was wondering, huh, what's going on? So I stopped what I was doing and I tried to listen to see if I could pick up on something. Then boom, a name popped up in my head. So I looked at her and said, excuse me, does this name mean anything to you? And she was like, oh my gosh, that's a person I'm contacting about. And I was like, dude, what's going on? I'm hearing voices. <laughs> anyway, I was all in with this stuff. And I learned how to develop this ability even more. 
I actually challenged myself by incorporating it into my speaking engagements to try to introduce it to skeptical audiences. I started training people, doing workshops here and there, speaking in classrooms every semester at my university to students. And several years later, I eventually moved beyond the confines of fundamentalist Christianity. Exploring and embracing things like astral projection, mediumship, channeling, you name it, which I know concerned a lot of people who knew me. Look, yes, there are fakes out there. Yes, there are counterfeits. I get that. But what does that imply? That there's a real deal. There's a real thing. And yes, there are lower vibrational entities that you got to be careful of who might be trying to communicate with you. However, they're also good and loving entities too. Kind of like people in this life, right? But we don't stay away from people. Don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. And let me just say this before I end. You all have this power within you, these abilities. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Don't believe the lie that you got to be someone special, okay? It ain't true. You just got to tap into it. Learn to listen more, to pay attention more to all of your senses. Because trust me, you're receiving messages more than you realize. But more on that next time. Alrighty, guys. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button and the bell right next to it to be notified of my next video. I pump these out every single week so you don't want to miss them. If you're listening via podcast, I'd really appreciate a review. It gets more people to discover my work and, of course, help spread this message. Like I always say, more's coming. Till next time, I'm out. Peace.